Hello everyone, I'm Goromoth and welcome to a new series I'm calling The Rundown, where I aim to provide detailed information on games new and old, provide my own personal opinions and generally show off some cool stuff. The idea is to give you guys some detailed information on a game and show it off for everyone to see. In this pilot episode we'll be going over the newly released game from Arrowhead Studios, aka the guys at Brighty Magica, it's a pretty cool game, uh, The Showdown Effect. Alright, so first up we have premise and gameplay. So, what exactly is the showdown effect? Well, it's quite simple. It's very much an arena deathmatch style game, uh, heavily inspired by 80s action film tropes, general mayhem, and has a lot of cool factor. I think that's the best way to sum it up. Basically, you've got, like I said, an arena shooter. You've got these big sprawling arenas based on various things such as Neo Tokyo. Uh, there's a couple of medieval levels in currently. And the idea is, it is a deathmatch. A side-scrolling deathmatch with a bit of platforming thrown in. You run around, you try and kill each other, uh, it's very generally very over the top with lots of cool explosion stuff, like I said. It's, I think the cool factor and general mayhem pretty much sum up the idea. So let's get into some more specific details. You've got heavy platforming, like I said, you can jump up and down, you can dive left and right, there's a lot of sort of free roll diving around. You have, um, if you double tap a direction, you can dive in that direction in a dodge roll. If you press alt, I believe the default command is, in a direction you do a sort of diving tackle, which is a lot more powerful and can be used to indeed actually tackle your opponents, which is pretty damn useful in certain situations. Um, what else can you do? You can also flip up platforms. Uh, that's a very familiar thing from people who are familiar with these kind of platforming games. You you know go up and down these various levels. Um, combined with this sort of free aim style shooting, um, very familiar to people would expect like a twin stick shooter, except obviously you're using a mouse. Uh, but it's not quite the same because unlike with a twin stick shooter where you sort of just aim in the general direction of people and then the bullets are like actual projectiles which can hit things, for the most part weapons in the showdown effect, with a few exceptions, are specifically aimed where your cursor is, which means if you've got your cursor on the enemy you will hit them. If you have it to the side, like front, behind, above, you know, slightly around them rather than on them, it won't hit them, it'll hit the back wall though, which leads to some really interesting gameplay actually. For example, if you run into the middle of a fight, like you just run around the corner you see like two guys going at it you can actually try and snipe kills from each other in the free-for-all mode because your bullets don't necessarily have to hit the person who's directly in front of you you can shoot past them using the aiming system and snipe the guy behind which can lead to some really interesting situations actually if you're good enough to pull it off or rather you have the reactions to pull it off. You can turn up to a fight and uh, instead of just, you know, mopping up the survivors, you can just quickly uh, snipe a kill and then take the guy who is about to kill him. It's pretty interesting, actually. Um, as you might have guessed, the game is multiplayer only. That's, that's basically it. There is no single player here. This is purely a multiplayer arena deathmatch style game. Uh, if you're looking for like a campaign or like a storyline or anything like that, you're not going to find it here. That's not what this game is about. This game is pure adrenaline multiplayer action, which in my opinion is perfectly fine. Like, I think that's great that games can be focused in ways like this. You don't need to have a storyline, you don't need to have a single player experience in every single game. Games aren't built that way. Um, so what about modes? What kind of modes are we talking about in this game? Well, you can play it in a multiple of ways. You have a ranked mode, which you literally just queue up for yourself. Um, it's no big deal. You just literally hit ranked game and press play, and you get put into a, a lobby with other people similarly matched to you. With um, has some sort of here tracking system, ranked system, like an ELO system you might be familiar with with other online games. But basically what happens is, the ranked game sets you up in this arena with everyone else in this free-for-all mode, and it actually tracks you based on how well you're doing against each individual player in the game. Rather than just giving you a flat out, you have this many kills and this many deaths, it actually tracks your st uh, statistics against each player, which is really cool and not something I've seen from other games. For example, if you're up against, say, two other guys, and you've killed one of them twice, he hasn't killed you yet, you'll have a score of 2-0 against him, which will be shown down in the bottom right. However, if you're playing on your... Um, against the other guy you're not doing so great, you know, he's killed you two times, you've only managed to kill one, you'll have a score of 1-2 against him, which is pretty cool, like I said. And then the way the ranked game works for the final scoring is, based on how well, like, it tracks how well everyone's been doing in their various duels, duels, and basically it will give you a rating change underneath, which you can see actively throughout the game. The better you're doing, the more addition to your rating you'll get at the end of the game. The worse you're doing, you know, you're gonna get penalized and you'll lose some rating, just like how any ranked game works in other multiplayer games. 
it's just the addition, like, it's not particularly complicated or original, like, this ranked game style, but just the way it scores it is really interesting. It's not something I've seen from other games, and I personally think it's really cool. So let's move on. What else can you do? You can do custom games. Custom games allow you to literally just pick a mode, pick a map, host the game, and go. Like, it's that simple. It's a lot of fun. That's how, personally, I play it most of the time, because I enjoy, you know, messing around with that stuff. And in addition, in the full release that they've just come out with, they've added custom rules, which had, makes custom games even better. You can buy these custom rules that add all kinds of various effects. We'll come back to those later, because that'll be in the later section, Unlockables. So that'll be covered later on. Uh, what else? Finally, let's talk about, like, the last bit of the premise of the gameplay, is the customizable loadouts and character selection. The, you may have seen already that there's a bunch of different characters running around and different weapons and all this kind of stuff. Well, the way the game works is you start with a couple of characters unlocked. If you've just got the base version of the game, you get um, Dutch McClone and Haley Sky. Um, and you start with, I believe, the assault rifle uh, or machine gun and Katana unlocked and that's it. Basically, you have two weapon slots which can be filled with any weapons. You don't have to have a melee weapon if you don't want to. You can have double melee weapons if you want to. It works that simply. Uh, you pick, you literally just pick weapon, uh, weapon for weapon slot one and a weapon for weapon slot two. It's pretty much it. And then you, you know, you're ready to go. Pick a character. Uh, each character has their own individual loadout, so you need to equip each one up. Uh, you can have, like, you can, depending on which character you like, you can be like, okay, this guy, I like playing him like this, so I can just set him, like, you know, I just want to give him these weapons, whereas someone else, you're like, I, I play this guy in a little bit of a different style, so you can put up a different loadout for them, which is pretty cool. It allows a lot of customization and flexibility. So let's talk game modes, then. We have the standard showdown mode, which is what you play in ranked games, uh, which I mentioned earlier. The showdown mode works pretty simply. It's a free-for-all. Uh, it's up to eight players, I believe. Uh, that could be wrong. That's off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure it's eight. And what happens is you have a time limit. A uh, person, you know, you rack up kills during that time limit. And as the time runs out, at the end, you get something called the showdown mode, where everything just goes nuts. What happens in the showdown mode is the arena starts going crazy. Um, it's one one life only, once you die in the showdown mode, you're out, and it's basically the person at the end gets declared the survivor of the showdown mode, And but they're not necessarily the winner, uh, you get in enhanced um, points for getting kills basically in the showdown mode, so unless, if someone's got a massive lead, they're probably still going to win even if they lose the showdown mode, but they do have a chance of you know, so people have a chance of pulling it back, basically, like, if you if you are the last man standing, you get a lot of points. In addition to that, there are a couple of other modes you can play during the, in the custom games, which is uh, Team Elimination, which is uh, maximum 4v4, but you can play it anything, like, we've played it 2v2 and 3v3, which is pretty fun. Uh, the way it works is, every time someone dies, they get a respawn time. Um, they can keep respawning so long as there is at least one member of their team alive and every time a member of a team dies the respawn times get longer. So the way you win is to fully wipe out the enemy team, make sure they're all off the map at the same time. Obviously this gets more and more hectic and tense because as people keep dying the respawn times can get ridiculous. We've had games where respawn times have gone up to like 1 minute 30, which is nuts. <laughs> In addition to that, you have a mode called the Expendables, which is uh, basically based off those moments in action films where there's a ton of henchmen just swarming the heroes. Again, it's a team-based mode. You do two teams, again, maximum eight players, so max 4v4, and you take it in turns to play as either the heroes or the henchmen. Uh, the henchmen are a lot weaker. They're a weak, they, they have preset weapons and they constantly respawn. They have basically no respawn time. They just can constantly pop out of doors and keep fighting. The heroes have to live and kill as many henchmen as they can. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Uh, if the heroes get wiped out in the same way as uh, Team Elimination, like I talked about earlier, the, the, then the team swap over. And basically, over the course of four rounds of swapping between heroes and villains, the team that got the most kills on the expendable uh, villains win. That's pretty much it's basically just get a ton of kills. That's how it works. As the expendables, you want to kill the heroes as fast as possible. As the heroes, you want to kill as many expendables as possible. And okay, the last mode, one man army. This mode is um, similar to. Uh, I can't remember, there was a mode in Time Splitter that's similar to this. Basically, one person is the one-man army, they're a hero, they have their full powers and everything. Everyone else plays an expendable henchman from the expendables mode. 
and the hero keeps going until he dies. When he dies, a new person becomes the hero and they keep going until they die. And basically, every person gets one uh, gets a chance of being the hero and the person with the most kills ends up winning. It's pretty straightforward. It's not, it's, you know, personally, I've played the mode a couple of times. I just not, I'm not a biggest fan of it. Uh, Team Elimination and Showdown are my main go-to modes, but the other two modes are definitely there. They're definitely fun and... They, you know, it just adds more variety to the game, which is, of course, fantastic. That brings us nicely into the next section. Unlockables. So, basically the way the game works, it has a sort of uh, progression system like you're probably familiar from many other games, such as, you know, the one of the games that started off big, Call of Duty. You know, this kind of system. You earn uh, the currency of the game, in this case it's called AC, by playing matches. You earn it from any, any matches you play at all, so custom games, uh, ranked games, any of that stuff, you earn AC. Uh, once you, what you do with that AC, use it to buy content. You can buy characters, you can buy weapons, you can buy cosmetic skins for the characters or the weaponry, and you can even buy custom rules, which I mentioned before, for the custom game types. So let's start off from the top, let's run down what exactly you can unlock from this game. So, characters. As I said before, you start with two, Dutch McClone and Haley Sky. In addition to that, for 1500 AC each, you can unlock Led Lord Edmund Gauntlet, Sergeant Lance Kabolski, Mr. Shofu, Leona Wolf, and if you uh, pre-ordered the game you additionally get Hank Steam and the, from the deluxe edition you get Mizu Ichiban. So what exactly distinguishes these different characters? Well as far as I'm aware from what I've seen from playing they all have the same baseline stats, there's no statistical difference in you know this guy's better with this or you know this kind of stuff, it, they're just flat out the same as far as I can tell. What sets them apart is each person has their own unique power. You have Dutch McClone, he has a personal shield he can activate to make himself temporarily invulnerable, it's quite a powerful one. Uh, you have this, the various powers range from stuff like that all the way to Mr. Shofu who has a flying kick which is also a really good power you can activate that you know to fly and click into someone and do a bunch of damage or you can even use it to escape because it has quite a long travel distance in addition to that you have other powers such as lord edmund gauntlet he can throw a vask of poison at people uh sergeant lance kabalski he can he since he's a retired cop he can eat donuts to regen health immediately very very useful uh leona wolf has personally one of the coolest in my opinion uh she can move faster while act uh, activating hers and also she can see people inside fog of war and they leave a smoke trail for her to follow it's basically allows her to track enemy players which is really really cool in my opinion uh Haley sky has a rocket jump which is it's a good power it lets you dodge stuff um if you're really good with a character for example one of my friends mark he is an extremely good Haley sky player he's he, his rocket jumps are ridiculously good However, if you're careless with that power, it can get you killed because uh, you still suffer falling damage from the rocket jump. So if you just rocket up into the sky on your own, you're going to take a lot of damage coming back down. Uh, finally, we have Hank Steam, who can throw grenades at people. Uh, it's a pretty simple power. And finally, Miz uh, Mizu. Mizu, sorry. Um, she has a very, very stylish power. I'm not entirely sure how useful it is because I'm not quite sure exactly what it does. From what I can tell, when she activates it, um, basically when she kills people, she heals. Uh, I'm not sure if it makes her faster, it might do, but it, it visually it's very cool. I mean, you can see right here how cool that looks. It's very, very stylish. Um, in addition to, I've mentioned what the characters can do, but they're all based on various stereotypes of 80s action films. Um, you've got Dutch McClone, who's very, very obviously inspired by Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, even from the the accent to his description and what he wants to do. Like, they, all these people are drawn from various points of um, these crazy action films. You know, you've got the Kung Fu master, Mr. Sho Fu. You've got uh, Lo uh, Leona Wolf, who's, you know, she seems to me like to be Braveheart. That's the best I've got from that, otherwise, I'm not too sure. Um, Mizu is um, literally just straight from Battle Royale. Uh, all this stuff, which is great, it adds a lot of flavour to the game and really helps carry it. Because not only is, is the game fun to play, but it's also got this really deep style to it. The 80s action film stuff really helps. Okay, so the next section of Unlockables is weapons. Uh, it's pretty simple, they're all straightforward. You start with the assault rifle and katana, like I mentioned before, but in addition you can unlock a pistol, shotgun, uh, SMG, uh, throwing knives, a rifle, uh, which is a bolt action rifle, and an RPG. Hang on, you may say. Yeah, I've seen stuff in uh, the video you've been playing and the, you've been showing off. Uh, I've seen, you know, crossbows and 
you know, different types of rifles and stuff. Yes, that move brings me quickly on to the next bit. Skins, with various cosmetics for the heroes and their weapons. Basically, like I said, mentioned, like I mentioned above rather, um, the only weapons in the game are the ones I've mentioned before. However, there are skins for them which make them look different, but they operate in the same way, which is really cool because it gives you um, it gives you a lot of variety in weapon choice, like in the look and stuff, and makes things look visually interesting. But at the same time, it doesn't stretch out the weapon base so much that it makes it really difficult to handle and work out what is what. You know, for example, the hand crossbow you're seeing is just, uh, at least mechanically, is just a pistol. Um, the lightsaber I've been using is the katana, the golden axe is also the katana. Um, you can get different throwing weapons such as throwing stars instead of knives. You can get a laser SMG. Um, you know, you can even get like a Barrett 50 cal for the rifle and stuff like that. They're all in the shop and they're pretty cool. But that's basically how it works. Um, in addition to that, you'll get cosmetic skins. Uh, you have three cosmetic slots to use on each character. Again, uh, just like the loadouts before, uh, you get, you know, they're, they're separate to each character. Your cosmetic loadout, again, is separate to each character. So, you have three slots, like I said, you have a head slot, you have an upper body, and you have a lower body. Simple as that, mix and match whatever you want from there. And that brings us finally to the last section of unlockables, which is the custom rules, which I mentioned above. Uh, those work, they literally, they uh, cost 100 AC each, and you literally just buy these rules, and once you bought them, you can then apply them to a custom game win. They range from all kinds of stuff, like... They have you have one hit kills, no starting weapons, no healing, um, exploding thrown weapons, and many more. Basically, they just make if you want a completely nuts custom game, you buy some of those, you throw them on top of it, the game, and you just have fun. Really, I like this edition. This was not in the beta, which is what I spent most of my time playing. Um, the edition's pretty cool. It adds a lot more flexibility to the game. It helps keep it interesting. Uh, it lets you just you know just go nuts, which is fantastic. This game is all about fun, and you know. They're definitely showing that off. Oh, and finally, sorry, I forgot one last thing, and that is the DLC store. And I know DLC nowadays, it's a little bit of a dirty word, like people are concerned with being milked and all this stuff, but honestly, it's it's the, in this game, it's fine. There is a store in the game, they're basically adding more cosmetic stuff from what I can tell. In there at the minute, there are a couple of things, just uh, there is a little propeller hat, which I believe is free right now. There is uh, a single new cosmetic suit as well, and I believe there's one other thing. There's not much in there right now. They haven't added like a ton of stuff on day one or anything like that. They're, it just basically means they can add more cosmetics to the game from what I can tell. And I'm personally cool with that because cosmetic DLC is always fine by me. Alright guys, we're heading into one of the final sections of the rundown, and that is the plus points. What do I think is great about this game? Well, let's just start off with the gameplay. It's fast, it's smooth, it's hectic, it captures the feel of like, you know, you get those 80s action movies and like, you know, stuff's going down, it's getting hectic, and then right at the end, there's just everything goes down. Just nuts, like, you know, a Rambo film, like machine guns firing bodies in the air, people dying all over the place, and those just completely hectic nuts fights. The, the game pretty much captures that, it's so perfect at doing that. Um, not only is that, but it's humorous, it nails most of the tropes extremely well. The uh, the uh, Dutch McClone Arnold Schwarzenegger stereotype is pretty fantastic, and is one of my favourites to play. Uh, at least to listen to, rather, uh, not not gameplay-wise, I use other characters. But the um, all the characters have their own lines which they sprout when they get kills or they, they spawn in. Like when it, In fact, you've probably seen it from whenever anyone spawns in. They get their own little mini-objective, which doesn't actually have any bearing on the game, but it sets the scene for what exactly this character's trying to do. For example, um, Dutch McClone is trying to find out who stole his identity. Uh, Hank Steam wants to rescue his family, that kind of stuff. It just it adds these little cool twists of personal touches each character and makes them feel more like an actual character rather than just this is a different skin for you know than this other guy and I like that it adds a lot to the gameplay um, the one-liners they sprout when they kill people and stuff are really funny and they, they're all really well written for the most part and generally I think they've nailed a decent range of characters I mean for example like I said you've got Dutch McClone and Hank Steam there you kind of badasses you've got Lance Kowalski the last day on the job retirement cop You've got Mr. Shofu, who is pretty much every stereotypical Asian um, karate master. Or rather, martial arts master, I should say, I think. Um, in addition to that, you've got, you know, uh, Mizu Ichiban, who is, you know, straight from Battle Royale. You have Haley Sky, who's the crazy inventor. I think that, you know, they nailed a lot of range with those characters, which is great. Um, 
What's next? Okay, so yeah, the like I said before, the unique rank scoreboard I think is a great plus point. I think it's really cool. When I play ranked, it's always interesting to see how well you're doing against each other. Uh, rather than just this flat out, you have this many kills. I think it's not like, you know, massive I buy the game based on this point, but it's something cool and I like that. It's different. Um, the, f the game modes uh, you can play in custom are really fun. Not only do you have the base showdown mode that everyone plays, the, the free throw with the epic showdown at the end, you have these different modes like that I mentioned before with team elimination being my personal favourite. I just love the fact you've got these different modes, it allows you different ways to play the game and again it just adds more to it and just gives you more options to do and play the game how you want to play it. Personally I think team elimination is fantastic, it's tense, it's fun to play and it's just a great time. Um, and finally, my final really plus point is that the showdown mode is just fitting the epic and it makes you feel like a badass. When you get down to that showdown mode and the uh, scenery starts going crazy and the music starts, it just feels fantastic. It's just absolutely great. I've never really felt a multiplayer shooter like this, like give you that much energy and just be like, yeah, this is the final round, this is it, it all rests on this moment. That, I just cannot stress how good that moment is, and it's just great. Next up we have the minus points, because, you know, not every game is perfect. Personally, I feel balance could be a little bit better. Tweaks to get need to be made. Some weapons I feel are way more useful than others. For example, I feel the rifle, while it is a powerful weapon, and obviously, you know, it, it can do about half of someone's health if you land the shot, it is a bolt action rifle. I feel it would be a lot more usable, for example, if uh, you could reload the, that weapon by a second firing shot rather than just having to hit R or whatever you found your reload key. It just it feels a little bit clunky, stuff like that. Um, I feel throwing knives may be a little bit too powerful, not quite sure, just stuff like that. Um, the assault rifle, I feel, has way too big of a clip size. That's just a flat out pet peeve with me. It's it basically this is one part. I'm not. I don't want to get bogged down in nitty gritty, but I feel balance just could be a little bit more fine tuned. Um, character powers are the next point. They're all really unique, and they all feel quite different for the most part. They, the problem is some of them just feel a bit useless. They, because of the range of power, they don't feel quite po properly balanced in terms of power. Um, Dutch McClone's Invincibility Shield, for example, is extremely powerful, whereas, um, Lan honestly, probably the most useless one, in my opinion, would be the Poison Vial. I mean, it's okay, but it takes so long to throw, and it's much more of a zoning tool than an actual straight-up damage tool, and, you know... It just feels like, unless you really like Lord Edmund Gauntlet for his looks and stuff, I don't know, I just feel like he's probably not the best character to play because of this. You can just pick a better character, which it's a little bit sad and, you know, maybe they could look at that a little bit, I'm not really sure. Um, okay, so the next, the next negative point I have, this one is a big pet peeve with me, and it's the blocking mechanic is extremely clunky. Uh, you basically, if you hold right click, you can block if you've got your melee weapon out, you know, if you have a melee weapon. Um, basically blocking will lock you in the direction you're looking and you in, you can block anything including bullets and as the bar goes down if you if basically you have a stamina bar and if the stamina bar hits zero you get stunned it's pretty straightforward the problem is because of the way blocking locks you into a particular direction you can't turn um, it leads to these really clunky situations where you're trying to like block and then someone flips behind you and you can't turn fast enough and you get stuck in one direction it's kind of awkward I I really feel they could smooth that out a lot more. It's probably my biggest criticism with the actual gameplay mechanics. It's literally just the blocking. Uh, the rest of it flow. It, it really breaks it up as well because the rest of it flows so well with the dodge rolls and the running and jumping and stuff like that. They all flow into each other really well and then you get this blocking that's just slow and clunky which is... <sighs> I don't know, it, it's a little bit of a stain on an otherwise really cool movement system. Um, and finally, the last my negative point I've got to bring up is that optimization and graphic options are extremely disappointing. Um, there are very, very few graphics options in this game. It's a very minimalistic um, graphics menu, which is sad considering it's a PC only game. Um, and the optimization isn't great. I get a lot of screen tearing in this game, which you guys won't see because of the way I record games, but um, for me, during all this footage, I was getting tons of screen tearing, and that's with V-Sync turned on. So, I don't know, maybe they should probably improve this. I know for a fact one of my friends can't play this game at all because it just like it just the frames just drop too hard constantly, which is really disappointing because, you know, it's a fun game to play.
Alright, so what's my conclusion on the showdown effect? Honestly, it's a positive conclusion. The game is fun. I've, I'm pretty sure you guys have already got this throughout the rundown. I try, I'm trying not to be biased, but the game is incredibly fun. You guys should play this if you enjoy the multiplayer style arena shooter, especially in this sort of third, uh, sort of side scrolling uh, style. It is basically w what it says on the tin. It is the 80s action movie trope game, and it's great. If you guys in have enjoyed the footage and interested in seeing more, you can check out the rest of my channel where I've got a few more showdown videos up. That you have some team elimination gameplay with me and my friends. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and basically I will catch you guys next time.